Hi guys, Hengist here from House Hengist Comics and a big welcome back, Beansters. And hard cheese for the delays, but by Jove, it should be worth it. It's been a year in the making and preparation for this, so welcome to French Somaliland 1940. This is phase two of our wargaming testing. Uh, it follows on from British Somaliland, which was phase one. And um, you can find all our work here at Military Wargaming. So we're going to be looking at the CFS, the Côte Française de Somalie. This is the theatre of operations that we're doing, adjacent, obviously, to British Somaliland. But first, some big thanks uh, to all those involved, especially the Military Wargaming Steering Group, affectionately known as the A-Team, which is uh, Colonel uh, Sibrin Van Klarberg and Lieutenant Colonel David White, uh, Colonel Darren Hart, and our campaign manager, Campaign Sam Charlie. Uh, French forces are known as uh, Blue Force. This comprises of Dave White, Craig Smith, Paul Bennett, Lucas Allais and Eric Jones. And uh, our good old Italians, the, the invaders here, this is Red Force. And that comprises of Sibrin Van, Klarberg and David Shaw, Phil Shaw, Frederick Bill, Alan Smith, Christian Lingvall, uh, Brian Farron, Michael Longenbach and of course Gregory Ward. And then we've got new Green Force, asymmetric and political. That's headed up by our Darren Hart with the team Steve Lancaster, Kevin Fry and Robin Fry. And then, of course, the infamous props department. Uh, Lee Sabia Byrne, who's done a huge amount on our aircraft. Barry Thomas is working on the databases. And Phil at Battlefield 3D. So let's look at what uh, Wargaming French Somaliland is all about. Uh, this is a, effectively a definition that we've been using uh, to really define what a war game is. And uh, the way we see it is very similar here, abstraction to simulation, simulation to story. Uh, we're looking at three levels, the strategic, i.e. theatre strategy, operational level, the campaign and its operations, and the tactical level, the engagement, or the tabletop play. So, um, you know, SOT has, is really important to us. And importantly, so is offset operational security. So we can't really reveal everything in these uh, videos because uh, everyone is watching. We've looked at aspects uh, including as far left field as uh, the uh, Oda Loop uh, by John Boy. And of course, we're really trying to understand uh, this concept, uh, the, uh, the center of gravity, uh, used predominantly within military operations as well, and really important. We've also looked at tactical uh, factors that are going to affect decision making. And um, as I've said, decision making is what we're really all about here. Um, so, you know, it's how the players make the decisions. Uh, we hope this will improve leadership ultimately and people's and players' uh, own personal development. So critical here are the tenets that govern uh, how we've structured our war game. And uh, that's a sort of um, a guideline to help us stay on track. We've done a massive amount of work in preparing the sort of paper behind it, uh, including the player's tactical guide and everything that's gone into refining the rules today. And also importantly, the campaign player's handbook. Um, and within that, here under section four, we list what our aims are. So do freeze that and have a look. Importantly within this is we're looking at improving from the feedback we've got, testing the top system, which I'll discuss in a minute, which really refers to logistics. Uh, and, and also this aspect of tasking. So, uh, you know, actions are going to have a cost and, um, you know, an influence on, um, you know, what they do uh, and how effective they are at managing. So, um, without further ado, let's now really look at uh, the research that we've conducted. And importantly, part of this was also looking at the overall history and obviously the native tribes and, and two are identified here, uh, the Afars and the Isis. And we've actually uh, defined their area of influence for this campaign. Uh, a critical factor we've always pointed out is bias. Um, and although we've run through this on the previous How to Construct a War Game, um, we, we really feel that this is critical uh, to understanding operations, the limitations, uh, what we call the burn in terms of logistics and tasking. So, yeah, I mean, I think getting those photographs helps build us uh, the sets and the simulation. But at the core is obviously hitting the books, and critical to, to my thinking is Peter Perler's The Art of Wargaming, which I found quite seminal. And um, I'm posting up now a series of books that uh, we've read and reviewed, extracted facts from, and triangulated to, to see if they're all saying the same thing, and that, that gives us more credibility in terms of fact. 
um, to, to put into the war game. Uh, we've used some French sources as well. We've been very blessed in terms of what we've uncovered. Uh, but we do acknowledge that we couldn't find enough information on uh, Somali sources and some Italian sources. Uh, the biographies of the commander, especially the French commander, the Gentleham, are rather interesting reads in themselves. And uh, the Duke of Iosta uh, has a very uh, complex role. He was to perish early on uh, in the campaign. Uh, we've got uh, Luigi Fruschi, the general who will be leading this attack. And we uncovered characters such as uh, the French fighter pilot uh, Biber, who uh, effectively um, managed to sightsee a lot of the, uh, the theatre, and here are some of where he took some photos, and in fact found information about Jacques Cousteau. Although I'm not convinced he was in theatre, he may make an appearance. But the more detail you uh, uncover, uh, the better the war game can start to be constructed. And a lot of stuff that we found out really, really surprised us. In terms of both sides that had operational plans, there was shooting from a realistic point of view. Uh, this did sort of start until a treaty emerged, which, uh, which basically uh, meant that the Axis forces uh, basically uh, agreed not to attack the, uh, the colony, which was Vichy, uh, France. But um, th that colony in this exemplar, because we are doing an as-if, has decided to strike for free France. Uh, in fact, the gentleman was an ardent um, free Frenchman, so to speak. Uh, a lot of the, the information around this really pertains also to the theatre and its boundaries. Uh, we've got obviously uh, Ethiopia, uh, Eritrea, we've got Kenya to the south. Um, so it, it's a real mishmash of and why Green Force would be so important in terms of uh, making decisions about what the, uh, the Royal Navy are going to do, what British forces are going to do, what indigenous tribes are going to do, uh, what are the politics that are going on. And these questions will be posed up and, and he will make an independent assessment assessment uh, and provide us feedback because we, we, we're not gearing and structuring this. This is all about player decision making. Now as you get into uh, analysing more and more information you've also got to start to prepare yourself for the sets because uh, immersion is critical in my thinking and we want everyone to be taken on a journey. Uh, a journey that will help educate and a journey where people will conduct their own research. Uh, the Italian forces are, being, are really varied and we've had to procure a lot of equipment um, and prepare for just about every single eventuality uh, and, and as we've said uh, a lot of potential tribal involvement uh, in this. Uh, we've also got to look at the native quality of the troops, uh, we have to try and evaluate that, but Shemali that helped us sort of establish a basis, you know, because we've got sort of camel-born troops, you know, the, the Meharists, um, and, and for the French, uh, most of their forces will in fact be Senegalese, um, who are quite fearless in combat. Uh, you've also got, uh, again, different uh, training levels, um, different capabilities. All of this was factored in. And through the experience of British Somaliland, I think we've really begun to fine-tune everything we want. And that has made a big difference. But in terms of strategic uh, analysis, you know, the commanders at the top are going to have to face some tough challenges. Uh, and, and I think that's, that's really going to impact on the operational level. In terms of research as well, I've uh, conducted a lot of work on trying to build all these units, paint them um, to as realistic uh, levels of understanding that I have, to be inclusive, uh, that in the narrative we're, we're, we're really talking about everyone who's involved, rather than just picking specific units and trying to replicate uh, their performance. Because across the Italian armed forces in the AOI, uh, there are a massive range of troops, from black shirts to Ascari, um, to native irregulars, to regulars, uh, to cavalry, to armoured vehicles, to armoured cars and so on. And the French also have quite uh, a few interesting troops. Uh, again, we're not going to reveal everything uh, there because, uh, as I've said, due to Hobson, we can't really put these videos out telling everyone what's going on because it, it ruins it for everyone else. So again, through the process of research, you start to become rather interested uh, in the lives and cultures that uh, you're immersed exploring. And that's what I love, I really, really love about wargaming. It, you know, the end result is the tactical battle. But uh, let's now look at system metrics. Uh, from the feedback, we built a timeline. It's clear that we needed this and we've really sort of refined our, our rules around it. We've set a basic uh, turn sequence um, and, and critical is in the assessment or the aid memoir to help people improve their planning uh, and get better at uh, understanding operational concerns. 
We've also really um, looked at uh, a huge opportunity for the Italians to decide what they take. And we've also finalised a sort of overall sort of stock throughput of what happens. Uh, Sam's built some incredible maps and in fact his map making gets better and better. And uh, that just helps augment what we're doing. And that's fantastic. But cr critical, I would say, is Messenger. Uh, it's been brilliant. We've done a, a military tactical exercise. We use that with Italian and French headquarters. We've got a steering group headquarters as well to discuss feedback with the players. Um, we've tried to make the form simple, but you know, uh, we've, we acknowledge we've already made mistakes in setting this up. And, and we're no, under no illusion that this is going to be tough, but we like COA, you know, course of action. We're trying to implement that across the board. You know, we put the detail into the actual sets. We have to consider what factors are likely to affect that. We have to be prepared for whatever the players are likely to do. And, and, and I come back to this point, which is critical. We're not making the decisions, the players are. And um, the players will make those decisions and, and follow those rules. Um, in terms of diversification, I've also had to sort of experiment with a lot of things. And now, really, let's start talking about Operation Fool Me. Uh, that is lightning bolt. Uh, that was uh, the sort of call sign really for it and um, we've already can see a huge number of Italian forces moving up into their jumping off positions um, cavalry infantry tanks there's a, an array a huge veritable sort of mass of men and machinery moving towards Djibouti and of course the poor French are somewhat uh, outnumbered uh, have a very long uh, perimeter and boundary to defend and they've got no idea what their enemy is likely to be doing but from the operations level nothing is easy there's very scant information limited radios and uh, all the problems that go through with actually fighting uh, where you can't see what the enemy is doing and you're only relying on intelligence and reconnaissance and uh, the air aspects as well which gave us so much data we really tried to include um, and, and try and build these sets again adding to the immersion uh, and everything that we think is so important to keep everyone uh, in this journey along with us. Feedback as I've said is not only important from the player's perspective but from you as the viewers and we love getting comments and ideas because we generally actually if they're good we'll try and implement them because we want the whole system to work and benefit for the entire community. And, and I think that's another really important factor because uh, we are community driven, but at the same point, I think we're stepping away from what a lot of people have been doing in the game. We're turning it on its head. We're trying to explore new avenues. So rather than looking at lists, we're looking at decisions. And that's at the core of what we're going to do because at the end of the day, it's all about what decisions have been made. There's no right or wrong one. It's just, do we see patterns? Can, can players actually improve through the framework that we've set up? Are the players enjoying themselves? Because they can't be there rolling dice per se at the tactical level. Seeing their plans come off or fail um, is, is a really interesting sort of experience and a great learning curve. Um, you know, we're under no illusion that the, that the French are likely to be overrun here. But both sides have set their own victory conditions, which I think is really, really interesting. So um, we've started by producing a few quick comics on some sort of low-level skirmish actions in the first preceding morning. And the next video is really, really going to focus on a lot more about the politics and we should be looking at um, the first few uh, sessions, man as we call it, morning, afternoon and night, and then that will be the end of the turn per se. But these comics are available on our face group, uh, group. just email if you want them. Um, they're there just to start to get us all uh, immersed in French Somaliland. So uh, for me, for now, um, look out for our second video coming soon with a lot more detail and obviously a lot more combat action. Um, but we're under no illusion that we've got everything right. A lot of the concepts we're trying to explore, uh, we're testing out, some are quite reductive. Uh, and, and the whole process is not whether it succeeds, uh, it is actually if it fails and how we can improve upon what we're doing. Uh, we're very thankful to the three colonels who constantly try and help provide us with those military rubrics and principles and ideas uh, and, and feedback the whole time, uh, trying to help also shape and develop the project. So please do feel free to s sort of subscribe, share us about and stay with us on this journey. So, okay.